So music is, is meditation. It's water. It's life. It's food. And everybody is a musician. Nobody is not included in having the food and the life and the love of music in their heart and body and mind all the time. It's what we are. It's, it's, it is life. You might say Whale Hogan is on a mission to save the world, one happy song at a time. The legendary Seattle underground mystical musician, or perhaps more accurately put, musical mystic, stopped by the Birdhouse in advance of headlining the inaugural Birdhouse Music Sessions concert series to talk about his fascinating musical pilgrimage that has spanned over five decades, as well as share a few of his original songs, a number of which were written in collaboration with his lifelong friend, author Cooper Eden, including a sneak peek at the latest one the two are collaborating on, a piece for a forthcoming production with the Pacific Northwest Ballet. Weo describes his music as love songs to the stars and the truth of who we are. I would describe it as an endless cascade of lyrical and melodic bliss permeated with novelty and optimism. So I invite you to sit back and prepare to be blissed out with Weo Hogan. Sound. sound is sound off. We're sounding off. Such a cool name come from? Well, um, back in the 70s, about 70, 1972, um, I met a guy named Jamail, and he had studied the Urantia book for a number of years and had traveled 
extensively all over the country and had uh, contacted some people. And he lived in Enius Valley, Washington. And I traveled up there, and it was the winter time. And I spent a few days there up there with him in his teepee up in Enius Valley. And I realized that uh, he was going to go off on a tour eventually in a, in a number of years. He was going to go across the country again, collect people. And I said, when that's time, you just fucking call me. <laughs> so I went with him. He finally called me like two years later. And he had gathered a bunch of people, and we hitchhiked all over the country um, for about a year. We ended up in Salt Lake City, and the Mormon elders approached us and said, you know, you people are fulfilling some of Joseph Smith's prophecies. <laughs> and they brought us into the Mormon church. And when that was happening, I was up in the mountains near Salt Lake City, and I accepted that name. Phonetically, it's Wayo. But it's really not language from here. It's Weo, O-A-O, O-A-O, Omega Alpha Omega. Just like you, just like everyone.
What would you say that your music is about? Music's about music. Um, the lyrics that I work with guide the direction of the songs. They're not really love songs from a human relationship standpoint, but they're love songs to the stars and to the truth of who we are. And, uh, you know, every song really is that. But I just kind of focus in it in on that with my friends. We like to write songs about that, about consciousness, basically, you know? So music is, is for music. I mean, I, I wouldn't even begin to presume to know the purpose of music other than what it does for each individual, whatever, whatever world people create for themselves and whatever music they include in their world is their music, you know? Who are your um, who are your music influences, and how did they? What was it about them that that hooked you or that that uh, called you? Well, we got to go way back to the Everly Brothers, of course, because it's harmony. It's about harmonies and songwriting, and you know, being able to accompany yourself. So the Everly Brothers. Chuck Berry, you know, that day and age. And also, you know, the sweet people like the Fleetwoods and you know, all those people that were writing songs, a lot of the doo-wops. Um, but, but of course, when the Beatles came, that was it. I mean, of course, John Lennon, George Harrison, Ringo Starr and Paul McCartney were my heroes for a long time and inspired me to, to write music. Um, and make up songs with my friends. And that's what we did in way back in the 60s, you know, when I was in high school, we had rock bands and I wasn't playing my songs then. I was playing Beatles, you know, God, Rolling Stones, Kinks, Zombies, all the British groups, uh, great. Um, God, oh, and some of the unheard of American groups like Moby Grape, um, you know, and the San Francisco groups and the Birds. In the Buffalo Springfield playing that stuff in high school. I loved it. But then I started taking a lot of drugs. And I just, you know, psychedelics. I, I never liked any kind of drugs other than psychedelics. Yeah, experimenting with those things inspired me to start writing my own songs. And that's what I've been doing ever since, since I was about 17. So I love it. And that's what I do. It was What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> I don't 
And that evening can't come From a where it don't come from Because, because we're on the right side We're on the right side of the dirt, my friends Like never Well, so I would ask you, what is the significance and the importance of music in your life? I feel so blessed because I have given my life and my attention and my heart and my mind to music. And so now there's a song going on all the time. And if I don't hear it, it's because I'm distracted with my human preoccupation of ego bullshit. And I'm so lucky because it's so obvious to me that that's what's happening. And all I have to do is listen to the song again. <laughs> but we make the songs. And it's a sad song or a happy song. And all are good songs. But if you got only sad songs, we'll work on some happy songs. <laughs> Do you remember a, a seminal moment in your life where you felt the call of becoming a musician, of becoming a creator? Absolutely. I think everybody gets that feeling, but I think we misinterpret it sometimes because we think that uh, we have all kinds of ideas about what that feeling is. What does that mean? It's the same feeling that, that uh, you know, um, pushes people into whatever their artistic endeavors are or whatever they want to do, whatever their business endeavors or whatever their family endeavors or relationship endeavors. Whatever that inspiration is, it's the same. And it's when you have a vision about how your life could be really changed and, and you could be of value to other people maybe even but you don't want to get carried away with that you just that's a possibility that that appears when you make those commitments but yes i do remember one time when i was very young and i was listening to classical music and by the way you said another uh, you asked about somebody who inspired me maurice ravel claude debussy french impressionistic music there's nothing like it it just puts me in another world completely. And uh, I do remember when I was very young, I was listening to, I don't know who it was, some classical composer. And what I heard was nonstop what they call cadences, which is, you know, how, how a, phrase, a musical phrase ends. So all I did was just create musical phrases that ended, you know, dun, 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 dun or da ba do 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 bang. You know, just musical phrases that just, start and end. And uh, I thought, wow, that's what those guys are doing. And then I realized, but wait a minute, they got all that harmony and all the way they move the instruments. And it's not just easy to do that stuff. So I realized, man, those guys really are engineers. And I wasn't sure I could do that. But after you love music so long, it's just what naturally starts to happen. You know this, and anything you do, you just start to find the intricacies of it and bring it together. It's so fun. You know, and there's so much music. You've got world music, classical music, rock and roll, hillbilly, bluegrass, folk. Oh, man. And, uh, you know, I love the music of India because it is so different, it's so wonderful. Um, but yeah, what was the question again? I can't remember. <laughs> this is the strangest thing It's on the moon is shining Hold it up way out there. 
would you say that, um, like what you speak of, that initial spark, that initial entry point into your creative life as a musician, would you say that that, that narrative thread has, has continued throughout your life or have you seen it evolve into something that's different? I've tried. You know, I've tried to do, evolve and, and produce something really original with, uh, with music. And like with everything, you can't, you can't separate yourself from the music and manipulate it. The music has to create itself through us. So in my endeavors to write songs and to do that kind of thing, what you're saying, have failed pretty much because it's not a mental thing. It's, it just isn't something you can scope out and then make it happen. If you do, you can start that way, but you're pretty damn well sure by the time you get to the end, <laughs> the scoping out process has changed considerably. So I don't know if I can really say I really have had a, a method or anything like that. I don't, I don't think I have. I don't think I've had a, a way to get to it that I can, other than just, know that I'm there and you are there and we're all there and there's no way to get to who you already are. You know, you're just, it. you're it. It seems like from what I've learned from you that um, collaborations with other artists and uh, has been a thread in your life. Can you speak to that and what's been the importance of, of collaborating with other artists and musicians for you? Well, first of all, music sounds better with harmony. So that's two people right there, two things happening. And um, then you get three, three, four, four choirs. My God, I love vocals and, and music and, that, and from the body, you know, and all of a sudden you're creating music and you're in harmony with each other. I mean, yes, I, it's great. And all the people that are, that are making a living doing the work in the studio, creating these things on their own. It's amazing, I love it, it's great. Every one of them will admit that a heartfelt moment with somebody singing is more powerful than all the money they've made from their fucking train commercials. And more power to you for making the train commercials. We need them. But let's not confuse music with advertisements. What would you feel, what do you feel is, is the importance of um, bringing beauty into the world? Happy people, healthy people, people who can live a long time and not die unnecessarily from poison. <laughs> it's okay though, we volunteered for the job. You gotta remember that factor when you get in here this, into the third dimension of planet Earth. We volunteered. We forgot, so you have the excuse that, no, this, I, I don't know nothing about this. You can use that excuse if you want. It's not true. Everyone volunteered, and then we forgot. So now we're beginning to remember, and we are remembering, so remembering, coming together, re-bringing the members together, and uh, it'll be a body of God. Do I sound crazy? Why? Why is that weird? I mean. Why do you think that criticizing God is something any of us are in position to do? And who is God anyway other than you? You know, so who are you criticizing? Take the criticism to heart. And maybe God can change too. <laughs> or at least know who he is again. <laughs> Keeping all of your truth 
yourself whole. You are my star cleaners. Writing letters through the night, reaching out for us in silence. And to leave in the dark is a part of the Like everything, you know, it has to pass away because it was born. <laughs> so everything is gone. And uh, that's the way I like it. So that's, the, that's where Oweo come from, and he's gone too. <laughs> he was never really here. <laughs> Laugh like the Joker you are. 